Japanese games led the way in the 80s and 90s. A Japanese company, Nintendo, has been credited with single-handedly preventing the demise of the home console gaming market in the United States by disguising the Nintendo Entertainment System as a toy when nobody cared about consoles. And some of these developers have been idolized, placed upon pedestals, and interviewed dozens of times. Shigeru Miyamoto, Hideo Kojima, Hironobu Sakaguchi, these are all names that we know and love, and rightly so. But there were a lot of games coming from Japan that weren't made by these household names. There are a lot of unsung heroes with stories that have gone untold for too long. However, one man, John Stepanek, dedicated years of his life to travel to Japan to find these people and chronicle their experiences for posterity. And there are three tomes of interviews that John has conducted covering dozens of game developers from Japan, and these three volumes may be our only chance to catch a glimpse of the reality behind the games that we have all come to love. The three books contain interviews from developers of all different genres and development studios, and a couple of these books are pretty thick with interviews from former Nihon Falcom employees and other studios famous for their RPGs. So of course, I'm interested in those, but not to the exclusion of others. It's a fascinating window into the inner workings of some of the companies that we love and some of the companies that we love to hate. One particular interview that I loved reading was the interview with Koji Yokoda. He was a designer for Quintet who, as you may know, developed one of my favorite series of games. For the longest time, I thought Quintet had gone dormant or even closed their doors, but in the interview contained within these pages it shows that that is not the case. It also describes how Quintet became Shade, and why. It answers questions that I had ever since digging into the history of Quintet during my Soul Blazer series review. The books also have interviews with some of the folks behind Lunar, Hydlide, and the Ease series, and many more. In the second volume, there's an interesting chapter referred to as the Hideo Nanashi chapter, a collection of interviews by a handful of John Doe developers who need to remain unnamed, breaking their silence, along with a handful of non-disclosure agreements, in order to dish on the inner workings and politics of some large gaming companies, including the alleged kidnapping of a developer's sister to prevent them from testifying in court. Most of the interviews that drew my interest were of course directly related to the JRPGs that I've been playing for years, but it really looks like there's something in these books for just about everyone. I know that reading interviews isn't for everyone, but in a lot of ways it feels like the closest thing we're going to get to a DVD commentary for these classic games. John's contributions to the gaming scene have been immense with the interviews that he's brought over to the West over the years. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if his far-reaching impact has helped shape some of my reviews in one way or another. These books are definitely going to be an excellent reference material for some of my upcoming reviews. When you get a chance, I recommend you pick up a copy of these books, even if it's just the digital download copy, and I've got links down in the description. I recommend you pick them up not just because of the content within them, and believe me, that would be enough, but because this is your opportunity to support real games journalism. Now before I go, I want to leave you with a little reading, a little excerpt from one of my favorite interviews in the books with Koji Yokoda. Let's discuss the Grandstream Saga, some regard it as the final installment of the Quintet series. Actually, as for Grandstream Saga, I made a proposal for that. So the concept was slightly different from what was proposed by Miyazaki-san. So although there are some similarities, it's different. However, when it came to the scenario, Miyazaki-san helped us in making the scenario. So therefore, there is some color of Miyazaki-san in the scenario. It was by Shade. Can you describe leaving Quintet and starting Shade? Quintet back then had business with Nintendo. We wanted to do business with other companies, but it was a tricky situation and... Doing business with anyone other than Nintendo was difficult, so we decided to come up with a subsidiary which spun off from Quintet, so that we can start doing business with other companies as well. After I left Quintet, they started receiving business offers and requests for game development, particularly from Sony Computer Entertainment and also Sega, and so Hashimoto-san and Miyazaki-san thought that it would be a good idea to establish a new company so that they could dedicate software development to those companies, and they came to me asking if I was interested or not. Hashimoto-san and Miyazaki-san helped you set up Shade. That's correct. At first we had work outsourced from Quintet and were too busy to create our own projects. 
but eventually that work fell through, so we decided that we actually needed to sell ourselves proactively and make proposals to get a publishing deal. So that's how we ended up approaching Sony and Sega, but we knew that we had little chance of being accepted as an anonymous or not well-known company. So we explained to Sega and Sony, saying that we spun off from Quintet to become an independent company, and since Miyazaki-san would be directing and overseeing the scenario for Grand Stream Saga, it's going to be fine. So that's how we sold ourselves to those companies, and that is why they decided to sign off on Grand Stream Saga.